Good morning. We're so glad that you could be part of our broadcast this morning. I'm Pastor Amos Robinson. Our worship service is already in progress. We're so glad that you could be a part of our worship service this morning. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our ministry, you can go to our website at www.arms.arms.cc. Um, if you like to give an offering or a tithe or a, a donation, uh, uh, help to the ministry, you can go to our website at www.arm.arms.cc and click on the giving tab. If you're in a local area, we would love to have you come and worship with us. Our services start on Sundays at 1030 and uh, our Bible study is on Wednesdays at 730. We're so glad that you could be with us this morning. God bless you. Our message today is titled, The Blessing of the Lord Makes One Rich. And let's look here at our text here. It's out of Proverbs, the 10th chapter and the 22nd verse. And we know that the book of Proverbs is known as a book of wisdom. And so it's, it's dedicated toward wisdom in the Bible. And the wisdom of God here is that the blessing of the Lord makes, can make you rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. So we're going to explore because sometimes when we hear in a worship service about rich, you know, sometimes people have made rich to be out, to be bad or evil or something like that. And being rich is not be bad. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Being, having money is not evil, but loving it is. And you have people that don't have very much money that love money so much that they put going to work above God. They put their professional careers above God. And they're not even rich. They couldn't even be making minimum wage or making you know, a, a small amount of money, but they put whatever they're doing, they put that above their service to God. And so this, they, they violate, thou shalt, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and have no other gods perform it. They violate that guidance of our Heavenly Father, that commandment of our Heavenly Father. And so this text here is in Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You know, when we're our, when, you know, how we go about doing something is very important. The how of what we do. Now, you can have people that get rich by selling drugs to people, all right? You're going to have people get rich by perhaps um, uh, hurting people in some way or harming people in some way, right? You're going to have people getting rich perhaps by stealing, right? Uh, and uh, that's, so the how that we go about it is very important. And how we go about it is we're led, we allow the blessing of God, every child of God, when they're born into the kingdom of God, if they, if you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the blessing of God rests on your life. But unless you're following what the Holy Spirit says do, in other words, unless you're acting on what the voice of God says do, then the Holy Spirit, the, the blessing of God is not going to be released. So every child of God has the blessing of God on their lives, but not every child of God has the blessing of God released into the lives. They're not following the voice of the Lord. Amen. And so we realize that the blessing of God encompassing God's blessing is everything. The blessing of God is so important. It's something that we go after because out of the blessing of God comes salvation, comes eternal life. That's out of God's blessing. That we have the opportunity And so as we will walk out the word of God in our lives, then uh, the blessing of God then will be released. Amen. So let's go over here and let's turn over to uh, Galatians and the third chapter. Let's look at Let's go over here to Galatians. So let's go to Galatians and the third chapter. And we're going to look at Galatians, the third chapter, and we're going to look at the, the 13th verse. And it says, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. My dear brothers and sisters, if you become a child of God, you are redeemed from the curse. Now, in order for the curse to not have its impact on you, you have to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. 14th verse, that the blessing of Abraham 
might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm here to share with you that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and that this blessing of Abraham, this blessing that has provided you opportunity for salvation through Jesus Christ, this blessing. Now, we're talking about the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and we're talking about financial wealth. Well, financial wealth is included in the blessing of God. Now, you got to remember, though, what the most, <laughs> there's many blessings in that blessing, right? The blessing of God provides us many, it provides for us eternal salvation in life. It provides for us healing in our, in our souls so that our emotions, if we've been emotionally damaged, are healed. We can think the right things. We can believe the right things. That's prosperity, right? Uh, that we can have healing in our physical bodies. That we can have healing in relationships that can be restored, but also financial the financial prosperity of God blessing, uh, in, in this blessing is the least in the kingdom of God, but it is included in it. And so we're ministering on this and this morning. The blessing of God makes one rich. So, and I'm here to tell you that this blessing of God has come upon you through Christ Jesus. He, he brought the blessing of Abraham on you. We just read this in the Galatians 3, 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus brought this blessing upon us. And as we will follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's going to lead to financial success. It's going to lead to financial prosperity. A, God is going to bless us so that we can tithe to our church. He's going to bless us so that we can offer to our church. He's going to provide for us so that we can take care of ourselves. He's going to provide for us so we can be a blessing to our children, our grandchildren. He's going to provide for us so that, we, so that this, this blessing of financial prosperity on us is a glory to him, and it brings glory to God, and it will draw sinners to God. They'll see that glory of financial prosperity on us, and it will, and they will, and sinners will be inquisitive as to how we got there, and it will open the door for us to tell them about the true prosperity of God, which is the salvation in Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, let's, so we say this blessing of Abraham has come upon us. Let's look a little bit about what this, what this blessing did for Abraham since the blessing of Abraham has come upon us through Christ Jesus. Let's look over here at Genesis, and we're going to look at the 24 chap, 24th chapter. Genesis 24, and we'll look at... Um, and we'll look at the first verse here. Genesis 24 and 1. Genesis, we're going to the Old Testament, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, the 24th chapter and the first verse. And it says, now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Well, that's what the blessing does. The blessing of God that's come upon us blesses us in all things. And that includes finances. Amen. It blesses us in our marriage. It blesses us with our children. It blesses us with our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. It blesses us in our health. It blesses us, first of all, with eternal salvation. But it also blesses us, a part of that all, is it blesses us financially. Amen? Let's look down here at the 35th verse of the same chapter. Um, so we'll look at uh, verse 24 and the 35th verse. And it says here, Genesis 24 and 35, and it says, The Lord had blessed my master. Now, this is uh, Abraham's servant, Elias, are talking about Abraham. It says, the Lord has blessed my master greatly. The Lord has blessed Abraham greatly and has become great. And he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. In other words, he's now kind of giving him, you could say, kind of stating his balance sheet, right, of how the Lord has blessed him, of what that blessing of the Lord. The blessing of God, my dear brothers and sisters, provides tangible financial prosperity and success in our lives. That's a part of the of God's blessing. The Lord wants us to, to be blessed in this way. Let's look over here at Genesis 26. And we'll look at, say, the first to the fifth verse here. Genesis 26. Now, this blessing came is, is upon us through Jesus Christ. But this blessing was also upon Isaac, his son. And it says there, Abraham's son, Isaac. It says, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine. 
So we would recognize today that as a recession or a deep recession, anybody remember the 2008 Great Recession in the United States? Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went to Amelia, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you for you and your descendants. I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I will make your descendants multiplying as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. My dear brothers and sisters, the bless as a child of God, the blessing of God is upon you. But the blessing of God is not released unless you obey the voice of God. In other words, you obey the written word of God, which is which has been uh, chronicled in the Bible, but also the voice of God, the Holy Spirit that's inside you. The voice of the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you right now through this through this anointed message, and so this is this is the the wisdom of God that was provided to him. In other words, you have to obey the voice of God. Isaac had some ideas about this great recession and how to avoid it, but God said, "No, here's my direction for you." So now let's see what this direction produced as he followed the voice of God. In other words, the blessing of God was on him, but it wasn't released unless he heard the voice of God in this matter, and then he obeyed the voice. Let's see what happened. Let's look down at the 12th verse, and we'll go from the 12th just to the 12th and 13th verse. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land, in other words, at the Lord's direction, the wisdom of God, and reaped in that same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for his possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. So my dear brothers and sisters, what I'm here to tell you this morning is that the blessing of God can make one rich. And we're not just talking about rich spiritually here. We're talking about rich financially. Now, my children of God, we don't love money. The love of money is the root of all evil. We love God and we obey him. And it's out of our service to him. It's out of our obedience, just like Isaac did here. He was humble. He had a, he had a, you know, uh, he already had wealth, but he didn't allow that wealth to go to his head. He kept himself humble. He sought the Lord. The Lord said, no, don't go where you think you're going to go. You're going to go where I tell you to go and do this. And as he did that, he began to prosper. He began to prosper financially. In other words, the blessing of the Lord, it, it, it makes one rich. Let's go over here to Deuteronomy. Let's go to another uh, Old Testament book here, Deuteronomy. And we're going to look at the 20, the eighth chapter there. Deuteronomy in the eighth chapter. It's right after Numbers. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are in Christ, if we have been born again, we are the seed of Abraham. And this, this same promises that we're reading is the same promise to us. It was made to Abraham, but because we're the seed of Abraham through Christ Jesus, these same promises are directed toward us. So let's look at Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter and the 18th verse. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter and the 18th verse. And it says here, for you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. In other words, a part of our covenant relationship with God that flows out of this blessing of God into our lives, as we'll be to him, it is the power to get wealth financial prosperity the lord wants us financially prosperous so then what so that it brings glory to him it acknowledges his covenant relationship with us in our lives so that i mean if you were to ask any parent do you want your children blessed and prospered or do you want them in poverty and under the curse they would say no we want them blessed we want them prospered we want our children to even do better than we did right and so, but my dear brothers and sisters, one of the most important things that we can teach our children is about God. 
is about this blessing of God that comes through our obedience. We have to be obedient to God, to the voice of God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Every child of God has the blessing of God upon their lives, but not every child of God has the blessing of God released into their lives. The blessing of God is only released as we will follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, just like we saw in that wonderful example of Isaac, where he sought the Lord in that very deep recessionary environment in the area that he was in in the world. And God blessed him, and he sowed accordingly as God directed, and he was prospered, and he was blessed. Let's look over here at Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. As we, as we contemplate this, as we think about this blessing of the Lord, This here is, is the recipe for its success. As the blessing of God is upon us, if we, I, I want to acknowledge you, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would acknowledge you to receive him right now. If you've fallen away from Christ, if you've fallen away in your relationship with him, if it's not like it was, if you, have no, if you don't seek him like you used to, I want to... Re, let's rededicate your life right now to the Lord. Let's pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before the throne of grace right now. I acknowledge you, my Savior, Jesus Christ, that he came and he died on a cross. He, he, he suffered for my sins. He took my sins upon him. He was buried and he resurrected and he ascended to the Father. And I believe this with all my heart. And I believe that by receiving Jesus Christ into my heart right now, and I do so by faith, that I am born again. I believe that I receive eternal life. And Father, I know by me praying this prayer right now that all of my past sins have been remitted. All of my past sins have been remitted. And that I receive, Father of love, the cleansing of my sins through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And I believe right now by me praying this prayer that I'm reconnecting in or I'm connecting in for the first time to the throne of grace and to my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe now that if you were not born again, that you're born again. And we recommend that you connect in with the ministry, that you not only experience now this rebirth, but you also let everybody know this, that you have given your life to Christ. And you need to seek out even water baptism as an outward confirmation of the inward work that was just done. And if you've recommitted your life to Christ, you were already born again, but it wasn't that way. Now you've rededicated your life to the Lord. Start out this, start out this path. Connect yourself. Pray on a daily basis. Take time to read the Bible. We provide daily Bible reading uh, for every month. And we'd be happy to share that with you. Just send uh, an email note to our ministry at a robinson at arms.cc at a robinson at arms.cc and we'd be happy to send you our um and we post it actually out there on our facebook wallboard page we post our daily bible reading out there and so you can access it there uh, easily on our facebook wallboard page but we connect you pray on a daily basis get involved in ministry connect with the ministry uh listen to sermons like like this uh, give financially into the work of God. As you will devote your life to God, as you draw back into a close relationship, you'll find that your life is going to change, that it's going to change for the better, that things are going to get better and they're going to go better for you. Well, let's go back over here to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the first verse. And it says, now these are the articles of blessing. In other words, the blessing of Abraham that has come upon us through Christ Jesus, this is how it's released. And these are some of what's connected to the blessing of God. It says, now it shall come to pass, if you judge you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. In other words, as we walk out what the Holy Spirit teaches us in our life, it causes us to rise. It causes us to be elevated. Second verse, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. In other words, the blessing of God works everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're at in this country, in the United States, or where you're at on planet Earth. The blessing of God will function and work there as well as anywhere. 
Blessed shall you be in this city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be the fruit of your body, and the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. In other words, if you're in a business, the blessing of God will be on that. If you're in a job, the blessing of God will be on that. If you have children, the blessing of God will be upon your children. Blessed shall you be in your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The blessing of God goes with you wherever you go. The blessing of God rests upon your storehouse, your ability to provide for yourself in terms of food and provide provision for yourself. Seventh verse, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. The blessing of God will be upon you. God will fight your enemies for you. They shall come out against you one way, but flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and to all to which you set your hand. And the Lord will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. In other words, when we become a child of God, we are now set apart. We're separated from the world. We're disciples of Jesus Christ. We bear his name. And so we become separated unto God. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. In other words, a part of the blessing is that people that would want to come against us will start, will even fear will come upon them. So they won't even want to attack us. In other words, the blessing of God can spare us damage that would have happened because we have it. Spare us damage that would have happened if we didn't have it, right? 11th verse, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods and the fruit of your body and the increase of your livestock and the produce of your ground and the land of which the Lord swore to your followers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. In other words, our Heavenly Father wants to bless us in our businesses. The Heavenly Father wants to bless us in our careers and in our jobs. In other words, what, we, what he directs us to put our hand to will be blessed and prospered. This is brought about by the blessing of God, by us listening to the voice of God, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. In other words, that's a sign of plenty, that you have more finances enough that you're able to even engage in lending and borrowing to others. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. The Lord wants to make us above. He doesn't want to make take us low. He wants to bring us up. And you shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so that you shall not turn aside from any of these words, which I command you this day, to the right or the left, to go after other gods to serve them. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you in this morning that our Heavenly Father wants to richly and abundantly manifest financial prosperity in your lives. Now, some ministries, they, they talk, all they talk about is financial prosperity, and some ministries won't even talk about it at all. Well, the truth of the matter is financial prosperity is included in, the, in, your, in your covenant relationship that you have with God. Financial prosperity is included. It's in the kingdom of God. And it's manifested into our lives. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the things that we want to do is, as we walk out financial prosperity in our lives, we want to stay in an attitude of faith. We want to stay in a lifestyle of faith. Because sometimes there may be times come up where there are challenging times for us, or there could be financial challenges in our lives, right? And we got to be patient and we got to remain faithful in those times. It's through faith and patience that we're going to experience financial prosperity in our lives. Let's look over here at Matthew and the sixth chapter. And we're going to close on this on the 25th verse. Matthew 6 and 25. Matthew 6 and 25. 
That says, therefore, Matthew, the sixth chapter and the 25th verse, Matthew 6 and 25. Matthew 6 and 25. Matthew 6 and 25. And it says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? In other words, my dear brothers and sisters, if we find ourselves in a situation where there's not the abundance of financial prosperity there like it should be, we don't want to get into a, 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 a place of worry where we start saying things related to that. We don't want to build our faith up in worry. We want to build our faith up in God, in the word, in, his, on, in the gospel, in what God says about it, right? You can have what you say. In other words, if we will use the right words, if we will, we, what he's saying here, do not worry saying. In other words, that's how you worry. A thought comes and then you're saying, how am I going to pay that bill? How am I going to pay that mortgage? How am I going to pay that rent? How am I going to pay that light bill? How am I going to pay that car note or whatever it is? He's telling you, the Lord Jesus here is telling us, don't do that. Don't say that. Do, therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Uh, uh, how am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my car note, insurance? What shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He knows you need your mortgage paid. He knows you need your car note paid. 33rd verse, but here's the key verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, that's what Isaac did. That example that we shared with you in Genesis 26 he had a thought about how he was going to survive this economic uh, uh, great recession, right? And then God gave him a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge about what to do in that matter. So he sought God first. God told him what to do. Then he did that, and it produced prosperity in his life. The same thing will happen for you, and the same thing will happen for me. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. But tomorrow will worry about its own thing. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So my dear brothers and sisters, I want to lay into your hearts that God, yes, he wants to prosper us in the spirit. Yes, he wants us to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes, he wants us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Yes, he wants us to be prospered in our souls that our thinking is right that our believing is right, that our emotions are healed. Yes, he wants us to be physically healthy and whole. Yes, he wants our relationships healed, but he also wants us to prosper financially. And so the, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. And as we will listen to the voice of God and we will follow and walk out what the Holy Spirit tells us to do, this financial prosperity and this financial blessing will be released into our lives. The blessing of God is on us. But unless we listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, unless we're obedient to God, the, the blessing of God is not going to be released. And we want to experience the release of God's blessing into our lives. So I admonish you, I encourage you this morning to spend time reading your Bible. Uh, we put it out there on our Facebook page, a, a bit Monday through Friday, daily Bible reading. Spend time in prayer. Uh, in our ministry, we have confessions that we confess over ourselves on a daily basis. Uh, come to church, give and, and, and offer, offer to church. All of this adds to your financial prosperity, adds to the blessing of God in your life. Seek the Lord. And as you seek the Lord and put him first, his wisdom will lead you and guide you to a much greater place. Amen. We're so glad that you could join us in this morning and be a part of our worship service. I'm Pastor Amos Robinson. And if you'd like to learn more about our ministry, you can go to our website at www dot arms dot a r m s dot c c um if you like to share a tie the donation a gift or offering with the ministry you can go to the website arms dot c c and click on the giving tab 
If you're in our local area, we would love to have you come and be a part of our worship service. Our services start on Sundays at 1030, and on Wednesdays, our Bible study starts at 730. We wish you a blessed rest of your Sunday. We wish you a blessed week, and we look forward to you tuning in to our broadcast next time. God bless you.